the Zalaxian fleet emerged from hyperspace, an imposing armada of warships that stretched across the sky. Their sleek, dark hulls glinted menacingly in the sunlight, each vessel bristling with advanced weaponry. The Zalaxian commanders, confident in their technological superiority, prepared for an all-out assault on Earth. The airwaves crackled with their battle cries, their voices filled with contempt and arrogance. The initial wave of attacks was a display of overwhelming firepower. Massive energy beams and kinetic strikes were unleashed upon Earth's surface. The Zalaxians targeted major cities, military installations, and strategic locations with pinpoint precision. Explosions rocked the ground, and shockwaves rippled through the atmosphere. The invaders expected nothing less than total annihilation of Earth's defenses. From orbit, the Zalaxian commanders watched the devastation with smug satisfaction. Their confidence was palpable, their belief in the invincibility of their armada unshakable. They had conquered countless worlds before, and Earth was merely another conquest waiting to be claimed. Hashtag, 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 hashtag quantum shield activation. In the heart of Earth's Defense Command, Dr. Elena Rodriguez and her team stood ready. The moment the first Salaxian attack began, they activated the quantum shield. A hum of energy filled the air as the shield generators came online, enveloping Earth's major cities and strategic sites in a protective cocoon of quantum energy. The quantum shield shimmered into existence an almost invisible barrier that absorbed and dissipated the energy from the Zalaxian attacks. The powerful beams of destruction that had been meant to decimate the planet were now being absorbed, their energy neutralized by the sophisticated shield. Detailed displays in the command center showed the effectiveness of the quantum shield. Each incoming attack was met with a corresponding ripple of energy across the shield's surface, dissipating harmlessly. The kinetic strikes, designed to impact with devastating force, were absorbed and dispersed, leaving the ground below untouched. The sight was nothing short of miraculous. Earth's defenders, who had braced for the worst, watched in awe as the shield held firm. The panic that had gripped their hearts began to subside, replaced by a burgeoning sense of hope and confidence. On the Zalaxian command ship, the mood shifted from smug satisfaction to stunned disbelief. The initial wave of attacks had done nothing. The commanders, used to seeing their enemies crumble before them, were at a loss. They ordered more intense and concentrated strikes, but the results were the same. The quantum shield absorbed everything they threw at it. Shock and confusion spread through the Zalaxian ranks. Their advanced weapons, the pride of their empire, were proving ineffective against this new human technology. The Zalaxian commanders exchanged frantic communications their confidence eroding with each passing moment. They had underestimated Earth, and now they faced a defense they had no idea how to breach. On Earth, the defenders felt a surge of morale. The quantum shield was working, and the Zalaxians were visibly rattled. Soldiers and civilians alike began to believe that they could survive this onslaught, that they could protect their home from these invaders. Seizing the moment, General Marcus Lee sprang into action. He had anticipated this opportunity, and now it was time to strike back. Using the protection afforded by the quantum shield, he coordinated a counterattack with Earth's newly developed weaponry. Earth's forces had prepared for this day with innovative tactics and advanced weapons designed to exploit the vulnerabilities of the Zalaxian ships. General Lee ordered the deployment of precision-guided missiles, rail guns, and other state-of-the-art armaments. These weapons, designed to be fired from behind the safety of the quantum shield, targeted the Zalaxian fleet with surgical precision. The counterattack began with guerrilla tactics. Small, fast-moving units used the shield as cover, darting out to launch strikes and then retreating to safety. Drones equipped with EMP pulses targeted the Zalaxian ship's electronic systems, disrupting their operations. Rail guns fired high-velocity projectiles that pierced the armor of the invaders' ships. The Zalaxians, accustomed to overwhelming their enemies with brute force, struggled to adapt to these hit-and-run tactics. Their ships, designed for large-scale engagements, were ill-suited for this kind of warfare. The combination of Earth's advanced weaponry and the strategic use of the quantum shield began to turn the tide. The precision strikes started to take a toll on the Zalaxian fleet. One by one, 
their ships began to suffer critical damage. The confidence that had initially characterized the invaders was replaced by frantic attempts to regroup and counter Earth's unexpected resilience. General Lee's strategy was working. The shield not only protected Earth but also provided a tactical advantage that the Zalaxians hadn't anticipated. Every successful strike against the invaders bolstered Earth's defenses and morale. In the command center, Dr. Rodriguez and her team monitored the shield's performance, ready to make any adjustments necessary to ensure its continued effectiveness. The synergy between science and military strategy was evident as Earth's defenders coordinated their efforts seamlessly. The initial assault had turned into a battleground of wits and technology. The Zalaxian Empire, which had laughed at Earth's warning, now faced a formidable resistance that was far from the easy conquest they had expected. The battle was far from over, but the balance of power was shifting. Earth's defenders, united and determined, continued to hold the line, proving that their resolve and ingenuity were more than a match for the invaders' arrogance. The Zalaxian fleet arrived in Earth's orbit with a ferocity that left the night sky blazing with fire and fury. Massive warships, each one a fortress of advanced alien technology, hovered ominously above, their dark metallic surfaces reflecting the faint light of distant stars. From the command decks of these vessels, the Zalaxian commanders, arrogant and dismissive of Earth's defenses, gave the order to attack. Energy weapons, capable of reducing entire cities to rubble, were unleashed upon the planet below. Bright beams of destructive light cascaded toward Earth's surface, aiming to annihilate major population centers, military bases, and key infrastructure. Alongside these energy blasts, kinetic strikes, projectiles traveling at near-light speeds, hurtled towards the ground, promising catastrophic impacts. The Zalaxians watched with smug satisfaction, confident that their superior firepower would swiftly bring Earth to its knees. Their laughter echoed through the communication channels, a cruel sound that signaled their anticipation of easy victory. In the heart of Earth's Defense Command Center, Dr. Elena Rodriguez stood poised, her fingers hovering over the activation console of the quantum shield. As the first wave of Zalaxian attacks began their descent, she gave the signal. Activate the shield, she commanded, her voice steady and resolute. Around the globe, shield generators roared to life. A hum of energy resonated through the air as the quantum shield formed an invisible barrier around Earth's major cities and strategic locations. The shield, a marvel of human ingenuity, was designed to absorb and dissipate energy attacks, transforming potentially catastrophic impacts into harmless dissipations. The first Zalaxian energy beam struck the shield with a blinding flash. But instead of wreaking havoc, the energy was absorbed, diffused across the shield's surface in a dazzling display of light. The kinetic strikes, expected to cause massive craters, were met with a similar fate. They impacted the shield, their energy dispersing in ripples that faded away without causing any damage to the ground below. The sight was nothing short of miraculous. Earth's surface remained untouched, protected by the technological brilliance of the quantum shield. In the command center, the tension broke into cheers as the team realized their creation was performing flawlessly. On board the Zalaxian command ship, the mood shifted from arrogant confidence to stunned disbelief. The commanders, accustomed to seeing their enemies obliterated by the sheer force of their weapons, were now witnessing an unprecedented failure. Their attacks, which had never failed before, were rendered useless against the human shield. What is happening? One of the Zalaxian commanders demanded, his voice tinged with panic. Data streams and holographic displays showed the ineffective strikes against Earth's defenses, each one absorbed and neutralized by the quantum shield. The initial reactions of shock and confusion spread quickly through the ranks. The Zalaxians, who had laughed at Earth's warning, now faced the harsh reality of their underestimation. Their laughter died in the void of space, replaced by frantic discussions and desperate attempts to find a breach in the shield. Meanwhile, on Earth, the defenders felt their anxiety transform into hope. The shield was working, and the Zalaxians' weapons were proving ineffective. The realization that they were not only surviving but holding their ground boosted morale across the board. Soldiers, civilians, and leaders alike felt a surge of confidence, ready to take the fight back to the invaders. 
With the Zalaxians reeling from the unexpected resilience of Earth's defenses, General Marcus Lee saw an opportunity to strike. He quickly coordinated a counterattack, using Earth's newly developed weaponry specifically designed to exploit the vulnerabilities of the Zalaxian ships. Deploy the railguns and EMP drones, General Lee ordered. Earth's forces, now operating under the protective cover of the Quantum Shield, launch their precision-guided missiles and high-velocity railgun projectiles. The railguns fired rounds capable of penetrating the Zalaxian armor, while the EMP drones targeted the electronic systems of the alien ships, causing significant disruptions. Earth's forces employed guerrilla tactics, using the shield's protection to launch precise, strategic strikes on the Zalaxian fleet. Small, agile fighter craft started out from behind the shield delivering their payloads before retreating back to safety. The Zalaxians, unprepared for this form of warfare, struggled to adapt. Each successful hit on the Zalaxian ships sent ripples of damage through their fleet. One by one, the mighty warships that had seemed invincible began to falter. Fires broke out on the decks, electrical systems short-circuited, and the previously orderly formations disintegrated into chaos. General Lee's strategy capitalized on the Zalaxians' confusion. With the shield rendering their offensive capabilities ineffective, the Zalaxians were left vulnerable to Earth's counterattacks. Earth's defenders, driven by newfound confidence, pressed their advantage relentlessly. In the command center, Dr. Rodriguez monitored the shield's integrity, ensuring it continued to hold strong against the continuous assault. Her team worked tirelessly making real-time adjustments to maintain its effectiveness. The synergy between the shield and the counterattacks was a testament to human ingenuity and collaboration. The initial assault had transformed into a strategic battleground where Earth's innovation and resilience faced off against the Zalaxians' brute force. The balance of power was shifting, and the Zalaxians, once confident of their victory, found themselves in a desperate struggle against an enemy they had grossly underestimated. The once formidable Zalaxian command structure began to crumble under the relentless pressure of Earth's counterattacks. The bridge of the Zalaxian flagship was a scene of chaos and confusion. Holographic displays flickered with warnings of critical system failures, and the commanders barked frantic orders, their usual composure shattered. Why aren't our weapons breaking through? One commander yelled, slamming his fist on the console. The fleet which had always operated with clockwork precision, now faltered as Earth's defenses proved impenetrable. The sight of their mighty warships falling prey to human ingenuity sent waves of panic through the Zalaxian ranks. Soldiers and officers, once confident of their invincibility, now found their morale plummeting as fear took hold. Reports from various sectors of the fleet painted a grim picture. Ships were losing power, some were adrift, and others had been completely destroyed. The sense of invulnerability that had accompanied the Zalaxian Empire was rapidly eroding, replaced by the harsh reality of their miscalculation. Capitalizing on the Zalaxians' disarray, Earth's forces intensified their retaliatory strikes. General Marcus Lee, leveraging advanced targeting systems and the protective quantum shield, coordinated a series of precise and devastating attacks. Earth's weaponry, Enhanced with state-of-the-art guidance systems, struck at the heart of the Zalaxian fleet, targeting command centers, propulsion systems, and weapon arrays. The quantum shield not only provided an impenetrable defense, but also allowed Earth's forces to maneuver with impunity. Small strike teams, protected by the shield, launched surgical strikes that outmaneuvered the larger, slower Zalaxian vessels. Drones equipped with advanced AI conducted hit-and-run operations disabling key systems before the Zalaxians could react. Dr. Elena Rodriguez played a crucial role in this phase of the battle. Drawing from her deep understanding of the quantum shield, she devised innovative tactics to maximize its offensive capabilities. She suggested using the shield's energy-absorbing properties to amplify and redirect energy bursts back at the Zalaxian ships. This tactic proved highly effective, adding to the chaos and confusion among the invaders. As the situation grew increasingly dire, the Zalaxian leaders resorted to desperate measures. They deployed their most powerful weapons, hoping to overwhelm the quantum shield with sheer brute force. Massive energy cannons, capable of obliterating entire fleets, 
were brought to bear against Earth. Experimental technologies, some untested, were activated in a last-ditch effort to breach the shield. However, each desperate attempt met with failure. The quantum shield absorbed and dissipated the energy from the powerful cannons, leaving Earth's surface unscathed. Experimental weapons, which the Zalaxians hoped would turn the tide, malfunctioned or were neutralized by Earth's adaptive defenses. The futility of their efforts only served to further demoralize the Zalaxian forces. The leaders, who had once laughed at Earth's warning, now faced the grim reality of their hubris. The shield held strong, a testament to human innovation and resilience, and the Zalaxian fleet found itself increasingly unable to sustain its offensive. With the Zalaxians' most desperate measures failing, Earth's forces pressed their advantage. General Lee orchestrated a series of coordinated attacks, focusing on systematically dismantling the Zalaxian fleet. Each strike was precise, targeting vulnerabilities and exploiting the Zalaxians' growing disarray. In space, Earth's ships and drones engaged the Zalaxian vessels in skirmishes that showcased their newfound military prowess. Advanced fighters, utilizing superior maneuverability and tactics, outflanked the lumbering Zalaxian warships. Railgun rounds and EMP pulses continued to wreak havoc on the alien ship's systems, leaving them vulnerable and disoriented. Key victories in these space skirmishes highlighted Earth's strategic ingenuity. One by one, the Zalaxian ships were neutralized, either destroyed or forced into retreat. The quantum shield, which had initially been a defensive tool, became a cornerstone of Earth's offensive strategy. It allowed Earth's forces to strike with impunity, turning the tide of battle decisively in their favor. As the Zalaxian fleet crumbled, the psychological impact on the remaining Zalaxian forces was profound. The once mighty empire, which had expected an easy victory, was now facing an undeniable defeat. The confidence that had characterized their initial assault was replaced by a desperate scramble to survive. Earth's defenders, emboldened by their success, continued to press the attack. The narrative had shifted from one of defense to one of dominance. The Zalaxian commanders, realizing the battle was lost, began to issue orders for a full retreat, hoping to salvage what remained of their fleet. The battle over Earth had not only proven the effectiveness of the quantum shield but had also demonstrated the power of human resilience and ingenuity. The Zalaxian Empire, which had once laughed at Earth's warning, was now a humbled adversary. The victory solidified Earth's position as a formidable force in the galaxy, respected and feared by those who had underestimated them. In the aftermath of the battle, the remnants of the Zalaxian fleet limped away, their laughter silenced, and their arrogance shattered. Earth stood victorious, having turned the tides against the seemingly invincible enemy. The defenders, united in their resolve and strength, had proven that with determination and innovation, even the most daunting challenges could be overcome. As the relentless counterattacks from Earth's forces continued to decimate their fleet, the Zalaxian leaders were forced to make a difficult decision. The proud and once invincible armada was now a shadow of its former self with crippled ships and low morale. The realization that their conquest had turned into a catastrophic failure set in, and the command to retreat was given. Order all units to fall back. The Zalaxian supreme commander barked, his voice filled with a mix of frustration and desperation. The fleet began to disengage from the battle, turning their battered ships away from Earth in a bid to regroup and reassess their strategy. However, Earth's forces, under the strategic leadership of General Marcus Lee, were not about to let the Zalaxians retreat unchallenged. Recognizing the importance of maintaining pressure, General Lee ordered a relentless pursuit. We cannot allow them to regroup, he declared. Press the attack and finish what we started. General Lee coordinated a full-scale assault on the retreating Zalaxian ships. Earth's forces, now confident and emboldened by their successes, launched a series of aggressive maneuvers. Advanced fighters and bombers swarmed the retreating fleet, targeting weak points and critical systems with precision strikes. Dr. Elena Rodriguez's quantum shield technology continued to play a pivotal role. Utilizing its capabilities, Earth's forces maintained a protective barrier around their key units, allowing them to execute daring attacks with minimal risk. The shield also enabled them to amplify and redirect captured energy 
turning the Zalaxians' own firepower against them. Earth's latest weaponry, including enhanced railguns and EMP drones, proved devastatingly effective. The railguns, firing high-velocity projectiles, punched through the Zalaxian armor, while the EMP drones disabled their electronic systems, leaving the ships vulnerable and defenseless. General Lee's tactics, combining overwhelming firepower with strategic precision, systematically dismantled the remaining Zalaxian fleet. The Zalaxian Empire, once the terror of the galaxy, found itself on the defensive. The retreat had turned into a rout as Earth's forces pressed their advantage. The mighty warships that had inspired fear were now scattered wrecks, drifting powerless in space. The psychological impact on the Zalaxian commanders and soldiers was profound. The arrogance and confidence that had characterized their initial assault were replaced by a deep sense of humiliation and defeat. On board the Zalaxian command ship, the atmosphere was one of despair. The commanders, who had laughed at Earth's warning, now faced the reality of their technological inferiority. We underestimated them, the Supreme Commander admitted, his voice heavy with regret. We thought they were primitive, but their innovation and resilience have surpassed us. The realization of their defeat was a humbling experience for the Zalaxians. The Empire, built on the belief in their invincibility, had been brought to its knees by a species they had considered inferior. The psychological toll was immense, as soldiers and officers grappled with the shattering of their perceived dominance. With their fleet in ruins and their forces in disarray, the surviving Zalaxian leaders had no choice but to seek terms of peace. A message was sent to Earth, requesting negotiations to end the conflict. The tone of the message, once filled with arrogance, was now humble and conciliatory. Earth's leaders, bolstered by their decisive victory, agreed to the negotiations but from a position of strength. The tables had turned, and now it was the Zalaxians who sought mercy and reconciliation. The negotiations took place via secure holographic communication, with representatives from both sides. General Marcus Lee and Dr. Elena Rodriguez led the Earth delegation. Their confidence was evident as they outlined the terms for peace. The Zalaxians, recognizing their defeat, agreed to cease hostilities and withdraw from Earth's territory. They also consented to reparations and the establishment of diplomatic relations to ensure future cooperation and prevent further conflict. The negotiations were a testament to Earth's newfound power and influence. What had started as a desperate bid for survival had transformed into a demonstration of human resilience and ingenuity. The Zalaxians, humbled and respectful, acknowledged Earth's technological superiority and strategic brilliance. The peace agreement was formalized, marking the end of the conflict. The Zalaxian fleet, or what remained of it, began its journey back to their home territory, carrying with them the lessons learned from their failed invasion. Earth, on the other hand, stood victorious, ready to embrace its new role as a formidable power in the galaxy. The battle had been won, but the true victory lay in the recognition of Earth's potential. The defenders, from the scientists who developed the quantum shield to the soldiers who fought bravely, had proven that with determination and innovation, even the mightiest of foes could be defeated. As the Zalaxians retreated and the negotiations concluded, Earth's leaders reflected on the journey. They had faced an existential threat and emerged stronger, united, and more resilient. The laughter of the Zalaxian Empire had died in space replaced by the respect and admiration of a galaxy that now saw Earth in a new light. In the wake of their decisive defeat, the remaining Zalaxians were compelled to negotiate peace with Earth. The negotiations took place in a neutral sector of space, with representatives from both sides meeting in a large, technologically advanced space station. The atmosphere was tense but hopeful, as both parties sought to avoid further bloodshed. The Zalaxian delegation, humbled by their defeat, formally acknowledged Earth's technological superiority. Their leader, once so arrogant and dismissive, now spoke with respect and a hint of contrition. We underestimated you, he admitted. Your defenses were beyond anything we expected. We come here to seek peace and to understand the power you wield. Earth's representatives, led by General Marcus Lee and Dr. Elena Rodriguez, laid out their terms. They demanded a cessation of all hostilities 
the withdrawal of Zalaxian forces from Earth's vicinity, and reparations for the damages caused by the invasion. More importantly, they insisted on establishing new diplomatic channels to foster trust and prevent future conflicts. The discussions were thorough and sometimes contentious, but the Zalaxians had no leverage to negotiate aggressively. In the end, they agreed to all of Earth's terms. The peace treaty was signed, marking the end of hostilities and the beginning of a new chapter in interstellar relations. With the peace treaty in place, Earth emerged as a significant power in the galaxy. Their victory over the Zalaxians sent shockwaves through the interstellar community. Planets and civilizations that once viewed Earth as a relatively minor player now saw them as a formidable force, respected for their innovative defenses and strategic brilliance. The galactic political landscape shifted. Allies sought closer ties with Earth, eager to learn from their technological advancements and strategic insights. Formerly neutral planets, impressed by Earth's resilience and ingenuity, reached out to establish diplomatic and trade relations. Earth's seat at the Galactic Council, once seen as symbolic, now carried considerable weight. The Zalaxian Empire, meanwhile, faced internal strife. Their defeat shattered the illusion of invincibility that had held their empire together. Some factions within the empire called for reforms and a more diplomatic approach, recognizing the need to adapt and evolve. Others clung to the old ways, leading to a period of instability and introspection. Back on Earth, the victory was celebrated with great enthusiasm. Public ceremonies honored those who had played pivotal roles in the defense. General Marcus Lee and Dr. Elena Rodriguez were hailed as heroes. Statues were erected in their honor, and they were awarded the highest accolades the planet could bestow. General Lee, in his acceptance speech, reflected on the unity and determination that had led to their success. This victory belongs to every soldier, every scientist and every citizen who stood together to defend our home. We proved that through resilience and innovation, we can overcome any challenge. Dr. Rodriguez, in her address, spoke of the importance of science and collaboration. The quantum shield was not just a technological marvel. It was a symbol of what we can achieve when we combine our knowledge and work together. This is only the beginning of what we can accomplish. Their words resonated deeply with the people of Earth. The journey from the initial discovery of the Zalaxian threat to the ultimate victory had been arduous, but it had also unified the planet in ways never seen before. The victory was not just military but also a triumph of human spirit and ingenuity. As Earth solidified its place in the galaxy, a new era began. The planet was committed to peace and innovation, using their newfound influence to promote stability and cooperation. Earth's leaders, mindful of the lessons learned from the conflict, emphasized the importance of resilience, unity, and the ethical use of technology. Earth established the Galactic Institute of Advanced Technologies, an organization dedicated to the research and development of cutting-edge technologies with applications for defense, exploration, and humanitarian efforts. The Institute welcomed scientists and researchers from across the galaxy fostering an environment of collaboration and mutual advancement. Diplomatic missions were launched to build and strengthen alliances. Earth's representatives worked tirelessly to promote dialogue and understanding among the diverse species and civilizations of the galaxy. Their approach was one of humility and openness, recognizing that true strength lay in cooperation and shared knowledge. The story concluded with a hopeful vision for the future. The people of Earth, having faced and overcome a formidable adversary, now looked to the stars with renewed confidence and determination. The challenges ahead were many, but the lessons learned from the conflict had prepared them well. The final reflections highlighted the transformative power of resilience and unity. Earth had not only defended itself but had also set a precedent for how innovation and collaboration could reshape the galaxy. The laughter of the Zalaxian Empire had indeed died in space replaced by the respect and admiration of a galaxy that now saw Earth as a beacon of hope and progress. As the new era dawned, Earth stood ready to face the future, united and strong, with a commitment to peace, innovation, and the shared prosperity of all galactic civilizations. The journey had been long and challenging, but it had also laid the foundation for a brighter and more connected galaxy.